Did you know that the more in shape you are, the faster you start sweating when you exercise? And yes, swimmers sweat while swimming. The real question is just how much sweat are we talking about? Now the human body has anywhere from two to five million sweat glands. And the reason that we sweat is to regulate our body's temperature. We get hot and we start sweating. What's interesting is that there's actually two different kinds of sweat. You have regular sweat and stress sweat. So regular sweat is when your body's hot, you're exercising, your body is excreting water, salt, and potassium in this form of sweat. The other form is called stress sweat, and this is where you're basically reacting based on your emotions, anxiety, excitement. And this is not just water, salt, and potassium, but you're gonna have fatty acids and proteins that are gonna leave your body as well. And fun fact, this actually doesn't have an odor. It only has an odor when it interacts with the bacteria on your skin. And anywhere from two to 6% of your body weight can be lost during intense physical activity. And if you wanna calculate how much sweat you have, what your sweat rate is, it's really just five simple steps. Here's how you do it. First, you're gonna weigh yourself before you go swimming. So ideally, you've already gone to the bathroom. We're not gonna, we're gonna throw that variable out. Ideally, you do it just in your swimsuit or in the nude. You don't wanna have any variation in clothing to throw this off. So then you're gonna swim for one hour. Now you don't have to swim for one hour continuously, but it's really important that you swim a similar style workout that you would do ordinarily. So if you're a distance swimmer, you wanna do a distance workout. If you're a sprinter, you wanna do a sprint style workout. The workout of the day in the MySwim Pro app is a great way to find find a workout that is exactly one hour so you can calculate that. The other thing is really important not to eat or drink anything. Now this is counter to my advice that I'll give towards the end of the video, but for the sake of calculating your sweat rate, you actually don't wanna have anything coming into your body between your weigh-ins. And then step three, you're gonna weigh yourself again and it's really important that you dry yourself off. That includes your swimsuit because your swimsuit can actually carry some water weight as well. And now you're gonna have two numbers, your weight before swimming, before exercise, and then your weight after exercise. So you wanna calculate the difference and convert it to kilograms. So if you're using pounds, convert this to kilograms. If you're already in the kilogram system, then you're good. Just make sure it's in kilograms. Then you're gonna multiply this number, stay with me, by 1,000, and that is how you're gonna calculate your sweat rate. And your sweat rate is defined by milliliters per hour. So I'm gonna give you an example, and this is similar to my body weight. Let's say someone weighs 80 kilograms in their first weigh-in, they do their swim workout or whatever workout you're testing this with, and after you weigh 79.5 kilograms. So the difference between those two is half a kilogram. We're gonna, we're gonna convert that into milliliters, that's the benefit of the metric system, and so your sweat rate with this example is 500 milliliters per hour. And this is what's considered normal for an average size person to sweat. Now there's a lot of variables that are actually gonna make this way higher or way way lower, especially with regard to swimming. And it's not just your hydration. You gotta make sure you're taking a holistic perspective to your training. You gotta make sure your lungs are getting the training they need every single day out of the water as well. And one of the ways that I've trained out of the water is with AeroFit, the official breathing partner for my swim pro. This allows you to improve your accessible lung capacity and it even helps you swim faster. Now it's really simple to use and it starts with a three-step test to get your baseline and then the app will set you up with a personalized training program. Then the workouts take less than 10 minutes a day and all you have to do is follow the app and adjust the resistance levels on the breathing trainer. You'll see the difference in just a few weeks because the exercises are gonna strengthen your diaphragm and the muscles between your ribs so that way when you inhale, you'll have in more oxygen. Now this makes your breathing more controlled which also helps you sleep better and recover faster. So whether you wanna swim a 50 freestyle in no breath or if you wanna feel more confident in the water, you've gotta check out AeroFit. So head over to the link in the description and get 15% off your AeroFit order. Now let's calculate how much you're sweating while you swim in the pool. Now a few different studies that we can look at with regard to swimming specifically. I showed you guys how to do the sweat rate test. You can do that on your own and that'll give you an idea. But here's what the data says. According to science, swimmers that were in the water 
of about 33 degrees Celsius, which is like 91 degrees Fahrenheit, hot water, we're sweating over one liter per hour. That's a very high sweat rate, literally double the calculation that we just showed. In the another group, the water temperature was a little bit cooler, 29 degrees Celsius, which is still pretty hot. That's about 84 degrees Fahrenheit. And the rate was only 0.45 liters per hour, a lot more in line with what we just talked about, that 500 ml. Another study showed in a traditional pool, which is a little bit closer to 80 degrees, so maybe 26, 27 degrees Celsius, 0.315 to 0.36 liters per hour. So a much slower sweat rate, so you're not sweating quite as much in colder pool. And then another study showed a much bigger range, everywhere from 0.5 liters per hour to 2.5 liters per hour. I mean, holy crap. That is a lot to be sweating, two and a half liters an hour. Can you imagine, you come out of the pool, you're like 10 pounds lighter, but people can do that. So let's talk about a few different variables that really impact how much you sweat while you swim. The biggest one is your body size, right? So someone who is 100 kilograms is going to sweat more than someone who only weighs 50 kilograms. It's just the way the math of the body works, right? This is science. Your fitness level also has a big determinant. So the more in shape you are, if you put in the same level of work, heart rate, we'll talk about that next, you're gonna start sweating more quickly because your body's like, okay, it's time to exercise. Your body's been through this routine before. You also have more muscle on your frame, more muscle activation is gonna click. And as soon as your body's like, okay, it's exercise time, it's like you've been primed to just turn on the sweat glands. And so in the water, you don't really feel this as much, but I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I'm in the weight room and I'm lifting weights, my body knows when I'm about to do a weightlifting workout, I get my heart rate up and then I start sweating, even if the workout's really not that hard just yet. Another variable is the stress level that your body is going through. This is directly related to your heart rate. So when your heart rate goes up, your body is doing work and your body turns on those sweat glands. So you're gonna to start to sweat more. So the more intense the workout, the harder, the higher your heart rate, the more effort you're putting in, the more you're gonna sweat. And even if you sustain your heart rate for a higher period of time, so this doesn't mean you swim more necessarily. You could swim a lot more and not sweat as much as a workout that had a lot less swimming with a higher intensity, higher heart rate, higher muscle activation. All of those things are gonna increase the amount that you're sweating. You're also gonna burn more calories, which means you need to replenish more because you're sweating and your body's burning a lot more calories. So keep that in mind. And then the other variable, which we really alluded to in these studies, is water temperature. This is the biggest variable for you as a swimmer. One day you could be swimming in a freezing pool, do the exact same workout as the next day in a hot pool. You're gonna burn more calories in the hot pool. You're gonna sweat more. You're gonna need to replenish your hydration all because the water temperature is that much higher. Now, if you're out for a, a jog, and let's say it's 35 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius, it's 100 degrees plus Fahrenheit, and you're going for a jog in the sun, you're gonna sweat. Even if you go walking, you're gonna sweat. If there's humidity, you're gonna sweat even more. And the reason is your body's trying to cool itself. These are some of the biggest variables that impact how much you sweat while you swim. Now, here's a few pro tips when it comes to hydration. Now, here's the rule of thumb. If you sweat more than 2% of your body weight, you're gonna have a negative impact on your athletic performance. And so you wanna prevent that by making sure you're hydrating at your sweat level. Remember, the average person, average size, average workout is gonna be sweating at around 500 milliliters per hour. So you gotta make sure you're hydrating yourself with that level. And most importantly, you have to remember, you are not a camel. You can't just chug water and expect to retain it like a camel. In any case, make sure you have something with electrolytes. Remember, when we talked about sweating, when you have regular sweat, it's salt and potassium that you're losing. So you need an electrolyte that has a positive charge. So that way you can re-energize your body to replenish not only the water, but also the salts as well.